If you love Gonzaga basketball and you love the Gonzaga broadcasting program, this is the best time of year there could possibly be. It's time once again for GUTV Bracketology. Not just an online reunion for our family, friends, and alumni, but it's also a big, important fundraiser for us. We sure appreciate your support. It gets us the gear that the students wear, it gets us different kinds of material to hand out to our wonderful guests, and it even gets us equipment, like a new DSLR kit that costs about $3,000. As always, have a great time this tournament season, but also please support us if you can. And as always, we most assuredly appreciate your support. God bless you and have fun on GUTV Bracketology. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to GUTV and another season of GUTV Bracketology. I'm Reed Vido. And I'm Nick Blackburn. Welcome to one of the greatest times of the year for college basketball fans and for us here at GUTV. The NCAA tournament is full of excitement. 68 teams start a new season with the hopes of cutting the nets down and having their one shining moment. People across the nation have filled out their brackets and broken down the matchups to pick their winners. The beauty of the tournament is that anybody from the college basketball guru to the average fan has an opportunity to participate in the madness. But the true beauty that we here at GUTV love is being able to bring our Gonzaga community together. We have the opportunity to bring Gonzaga community together and all students and alum as well. The first episode of GUTV Bracketology is loaded with not only tournament analysis, but also showcases some of GUTV's best. We will hi highlight a senior who has landed a premier internship in Spokane, and an alum who is pursuing his passion for comedy. We will also bring in Gonzaga Bulletin e editor Andy Bueller to talk about his e experience in Las Vegas, as well as help out with some last minute bracket pred predictions. Being a part of GUTV's online bracketology is easier than ever. We have an online bracket that is comprised of GUTV current students, family and friends, our wonderful GUTV alumni, and for the first time ever, your pets can join in on the fun. Here's executive producer Daniel and Serpy to explain how to join this year's Bracket Pool. Hello, GUTV friends, family, and alumni. Welcome to Bracketology. Welcome to one of the best times of year here at Gonzaga. Now, Bracketology is our online reunion. We do an online pool on CBS Sports, and it's really quite simple to participate. So I'm going to show you the steps how to participate, make sure that you know how to make your proper picks, and make sure that you have a fair chance of walking away as the winner. Now all you have to do, simply log into the bracket, make your picks. You can pick based on the school if you like their mascot, you may even know the matchup, it doesn't matter. It's all about making sure everyone has fun regardless of the basketball knowledge. And one last tip of advice when filling out these brackets. If you are smart, you will have Gonzaga going to at least the second weekend, meaning two upsets and another Sweet 16 berth. Now remember, the brackets lock tomorrow morning, so get those picks in. And stay tuned for all of our Bracketology episodes, all NCAA tournament long, to see where you fall in the standings. Thanks for playing, good luck, and most importantly, thank you for supporting us here at GUTV. If you want to join in in our Bracket Madness, send Professor Dan an email at garrity.gonzaga.edu and ask for an invitation. Aside from joining in on the fun, we also need you to donate. Your donations will go a long way in ensuring that our program continues to excel. Go to, to donate, log on to the link below at www.commerce.cashnet. The social media scene surrounding the NCAA tournament is very active across the country. People are making their predictions known and sharing their school pride. Let's go over to Kennedy McGann in the Tweet Suite for more on the pre-tournament excitement. Hey guys, so once you've picked your teams for your brackets, you can sign your pets up for the, our first ever pet division at GUTV. Um, we had a few of you tweet in some pictures of you and your pets, so let's take a look at who's going to be competing. First up, we have um, Mariah Woolberry, who says, move over. Denise Woolweber, who graduated in 95, just signed her cow up to play. Next, we have Scott Weller, who tweeted, Simon the Cat is mulling over in his sleeper picks. 
If the, uh, if the mascot is a cat, he likes their odds. And lastly, we have Veronica Murray who tweeted, my fish have Marilyn going all the way. They really like the Terrapin mascot. Thank you guys for tweeting us. Um, good luck with um, your pets and um, the competition. Um, but coming up, we have um, our bracketologist who will be going over some of your Cinderella picks. And next, um, and keep tweeting us your questions. And also we have um, two very special people who are a part of our GUTV family. We will be showcasing our alumni of the week and our um, senior of the week. So make sure to watch those. I heard one of them does a really good impression of Professor Dan. Welcome back to Bracketology on GUTV. We've had the opportunity to share how to participate, but now it's time to show you some of the best and brightest here at GUTV. The NCAA tournament is an opportunity for the best players across the nation to showcase their God-given abilities on the biggest stage. GUTV offers a stage for students to find where they should be in the field. This senior of the week is Zach Bagdan. He has taken his love for post-production to use it to gain an incredible opportunity. Um, I always love to do content for a show, um, making any sort of like graphics. I love doing After Effects, um, this is my kind of forte, so it was a lot of fun doing that stuff. But I also, towards my second time taking advance, um, Dan really pushed me to be director um, for the class, or not for the class, but for some shows, and I started to fall in love with it, um, and it just really grew on me. Um, it's a lot of pressure and very stressful, but at the same time, it's kind of exciting at the same time. So doing that really was a lot of fun. He works really hard. Um, he's a very, very determined and very devoted uh, person in general, I think, to, you know, what he does in school, what he does outside of school, to his friends, to his family. Um, and uh, he just, he's always learning. Uh, he always is, you know, trying new things, whether it's, uh, I mean, After Effects is a big one in, the, like, the last year, even, just to see him grow from somebody, you know, who kind of learned about it in the weekend seminar and then kind of really nailed it, just studied it and looked at it. How do I do this? You know, how can I change my game a little bit to make myself stand out, to make my work stand out? Striving for perfection kind of thing um, and just working working really hard because I mean I've always grown up as you know if you do a lot of hard work it's gonna pay off in the end and Jew TV also taught me that and now just applying that at corner booth because um, I mean I'll be in there as long as I can just trying to you know get a project done ahead of time or even just be a good listener with Andrew and Frank and just kind of just have them talk to me and just tell them what they think should go into it and um, just trying to adapt what they've been telling me into what I know. What he knows is that he has tried everything and truly found his passion in editing. He did this while creating special bonds with his classmates and enjoying college every step of the way. We will miss you as you keep striving for perfection. Zach is a great example of what this program is centered around, becoming a leader and striving for excellence. Moving on to our alum of the week, we meet an individual who has taken on an entirely different career path, but the time he spent at GTV helped pave the way for him to pursue his career as a live performer. Uh, my name is Colin Murphy and I uh, graduated from Gonzaga University 
in uh, 2007. This GUTV alum has combined his background in broadcasting and his passion for comedy to find himself living out his dream. Ever since I was a little kid, I enjoyed making people laugh, making uh, my family, I come from a big family, I'm one of five, and uh, I always enjoyed making them laugh. And uh, I, don't, I don't think I really was able to find a pathway to hopefully making a career out of that until I got to Gonzaga, got involved with obviously the broadcasting department and also the theater department uh, through Guts. Uh, right now I'm, I'm living in LA, I've been down in LA for almost eight years. Uh, I perform at two uh, great theaters here in LA, uh, the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, and then the Groundlings Theater. Uh, recently, a few months ago, I got added to their Sunday company, and the Groundlings Theater is a very famous theater. It's been around since the 70s, and uh, so I just feel so lucky, lucky to get to perform there. Well, I've had a, I've had a few really uh, fun scenes that I've done. One that sticks out is a scene called uh, Trick or Treat that I perform with a friend of mine named Sheila Carrasco. Ma, 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 what are you what? doing, Ma? No, I want to say that. Ma, ma, ma. No. Trick or treat! Hopefully if you write something and you perform something really fun, uh, you get those laughs and the laughs always feel great. I've been performing a lot, which is, is that alone is just, uh, you know, I'm so passionate about, about doing that. Uh, I've always wanted, uh, you know, performing comedy to be a part of my life. And so moving forward, I'm just trying to give myself as many opportunities to, to do that, you know, trying to write. Colin said the most important skill he learned at GUTV was the ability to write. I remember, Dan Garrity being one of the first people that really gave me an opportunity and pushed me to, to write. Uh, even to this day, as an adult, when I'm writing or when I'm performing, in the back of my head, I can still hear Dan saying, you know, when you go for it, uh, things go really well for you, Colin. And I still hear that right before I run on stage sometimes, uh, that, you know, if I just go for it, um, that's the best opportunity I'll have to be successful. So. Uh, yeah, and uh, that meant a lot to me. So. For me, I think working in the uh, GUTV program, it made me realize how much I enjoyed writing and uh, performing comedy. And I felt like I knew that that was always going to be what I loved more than uh, you know maybe doing the reporting side, that sort of thing. Leave that up to the uh, the professionals. I'll be a goofball instead. It made forty-seven million twenty-six thousand. $28 this goofball even does an impression of our very own Professor Dan Garrity. He was like, he had this like obsession with being like, we don't shoot film, we shoot videotape. We don't shoot film, we shoot videotape. And uh, I remember his, you know, fiery red bald head just getting so angry about that. And uh, yeah, so I, I think... Uh, I'll, I'll have that, uh, that sweet bald-headed man ingrained in my memory for a long, long time. It's pretty awesome how somebody can nail an impression of Professor Dan almost 10 years since graduation. Prior to this interview, Colin came from an audition with Pixar. We wish him the best of luck as he continues to follow his dream. Coming up on GUTV, we'll sit down with our bracketologist, Andy Bueller, to recap the Vague's experience and to break down some of the tournament matchups. You're watching Me. Go Zags! Go Zags! Go Zags! Go Zags! Go Zags! Go Zags! Until next time, I'm Greg Talbot. Go Zags! Oh. Oh. Go Zags! Go Zags! Don't get it! Let's go! Come on! Don't get I told you not to do that to Let's go, baby! Let's go, baby! You can't go right! You can't go right! Oh! You ain't never doing that! Nuh uh! Not on me!
My bad. My bad. You're good. You're my bad. My bad. You're good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Welcome back to GTV Bracketology, I'm Nick Blackburn. With just about all the first four games wrapped up, tomorrow tips off the first round of the NCAA tournament. The excitement has continued to rise, especially on our social media. Let's go back to Kennedy to hear both the Zags predictions as well as some of the potential Cinderella's in the bracket. So we have a few Cinderella picks that were tweeted at us. First up, we have James Churchill who said his Cinderella pick is VCU to the Elite Eight. Zags are going to the round 32 and St. Mary's College to the final four of the NIT. Uh, sorry to those St. Mary's fans, but God is definitely not a Gale. Next up we have John Billings and his um, Cinderella picks are based on coaching. So his upset pick is Little Rock because of a great coach and his slight surprise Elite Eight run for Miami too. Then we have Stephen Carr, um, a recent GUTV alum, and his Cinderella pick is Yale. Um, he says, first time in tourney since 1962 and a good chance to beat Baylor. I have Gonzaga losing to Utah in round two, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, lastly, we have Dave who tweeted, I like Hawaii to make some noise as a possible Cinderella. I'm a sucker, so I have the Zags in the Sweet 16. Hashtag go Zags. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for tweeting those. Um, we, uh, for the 18th straight year, Gonzaga has made it to the NCAA tournament. And now we are going to go back to Reed Vido, who has a person who um, had behind the scenes access to the, um, the WCC tournament in Vegas. Um, so let's go to him for that. Thanks, Kennedy. After a magical run in Las Vegas, Gonzaga is back to the NCAA tournament for the 18th consecutive year. And who better to join us than the managing editor of the Gonzaga Bulletin, Andy Bueller. Andy, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So you got to live it up this spring break and go to Vegas for the tournament. How was it? It was great. You know, there was a lot of good basketball games. Uh, only two blowouts in the entire tournament. So for someone, you know, I like to go watch every game. It was pretty fantastic. Yeah, and uh, you were also lucky enough to go last year. How does uh, last year compare to this year? You know, when you talk about, you know, both of the teams, last year the team was uh, playing for seeding, and this year they were playing for their tournament lives. So uh, those types of stakes are, uh, make it, you know, a bigger deal. Right, and uh, we actually had Katie Carl, who was uh, in band, had take some of this awesome footage of cutting down the nets there, which is always an awesome feeling. Um, now, this year with the tournament was a little bit different compared to previous years, where last year we kind of had that confidence of making the tournament, but going to this WCC tournament, there was kind of, people were unsure whether or not we'd make the NCAA tournament. How did that affect the feel of being at the games? You know, it, there certainly, you know, Gonzaga fans showed up regardless. They do every year. Uh, but this year there was a certain electricity to it. And uh, the team, they really focused on taking it one game at a time. They, and, you know, they had to play BYU and St. Mary's back to back, two teams they had already lost to this season. So uh, that certainly was a tough feat. And uh, once they beat BYU, I think the confidence was pretty high. Nice. And what was kind of the one moment or one key play of the tournament that kind of defined the Gonzaga's play? Oh, with, within the last couple minutes, um, this, uh, let's see, St. Mary's was uh, pressing up uh, and Gonzaga was up a few possessions and they were trying to close out. And uh, they, St. Mary's, the defense lost track of Eric McClellan and so Perkins just threw it to him and he had a wide open dunk uh, to cap, you know, 15 points uh, in the final minutes for him. So that secured the win and that was an enormous play. All right, now uh, we have this big momentum going to the NCAA tournament. What's your analysis of the Seton Hall game coming up tomorrow night? Seton Hall is an interesting matchup because they're a team that, uh, you know, last year, Seton Hall, uh, if they uh, they were ranked 19 at one point in the season and they had all these talented freshmen uh, but then it kind of you know it kind of started to crumble and they didn't end up making the NCAA tournament this year uh, they're they have five hungry soph sophomores in the starting lineup and uh, they should be uh, a, a team that we Gonzaga sh certainly shouldn't look past and uh, as we all know the Zags are playing in Denver and uh, our very own Josh Perkins is from Denver uh, do you expect to see him kind of as a hometown hero and showing up big in the game? Maybe, yeah, no, and, and guard play is enormous in this game. Uh, Josh Perkins has played really, really well, and he played well in the uh, averaging double-digit scoring in the, in the WCC tournament, so he, if he could continue that play in front of friends and family, uh, that certainly would help out GU. Awesome, that's awesome. Well, uh, in just a minute here, we're going to have some questions from our viewers, but 
You have something pretty cool that I wanted to bring up. You've started a uh, podcast called Zags on 3. What can you tell us about that? So, yep, the Zags on 3 podcast, we record uh, every Sunday, publish usually every Monday, and uh, we try to bring on... uh, uh, involve other college papers, college sports sections, and uh, you know, talk to players and just kind of dissect the season in uh, Gonzaga basketball, whether it's men's or women's. And you got uh, Gonzaga's very own Eric McClellan on the show. How did you manage that? Uh, I mean, we just they had a media availability, uh, and we, we talked to Eric. Uh, actually, that one was after the game. Uh, we caught up with Josh Perkins right before they left to talk about uh, going back and playing at home. So, uh, that, yeah, it was nice to have them on. Oh, cool. And uh, where do you see the podcast going in the future? You know, hopefully we can get it out to more people. Uh, we'd love to get uh, interaction with fans. That We, we, we want to hear what people have to say and kind of take the pulse on uh, uh, Zag Nation. And uh, where can uh, people go to check out this po- you podcast? Can, uh, you can find it on the Gonzaga Bulletin website, gonzagabulletin.com, uh, or on SoundCloud, uh, search Zags on 3 Podcast. It's also on iTunes and Stitcher. Well, very cool. Good for you for doing the podcast. Now, we're going to go over to uh, Kennedy in the tweet suite who has some questions from some of our viewers for you, our bracketologist. Perfect. Hey, so we have a couple questions for you, Andy. One of them is from Nick Burge, who is a cheerleader for Gonzaga, and he's actually in Denver right now. Um, his question is, many teams in the tourney have similar records. What, what stats are most important when picking winners? Picking uh, guards. Great guard play, all, uh, you know, usually wins tournament games. So you look at a team like Wichita State with uh, Fred Van Vliet and Ron Baker as they're starting a point guard and shooting guard. They're a team that made a huge run two years ago, and the guys are still in school. So even as an 11 seed, those are some, uh, those, that's a team that you should look out for. And not to mention just the field goal or the free throw shooting percentage because a lot of these games come down to the wire and just those small points are really what makes the difference. Certainly. And uh, I think we have... One more question from Kennedy in the tweet suite. Kennedy, let's hear it. Yes, so this is our other question, and it's from Carter Gallo, who is a basketball player at Santa Monica College down in California. So he tweets, obviously would love to see the Zags make a run, but there, but are there any other double-digit seeded teams you see potentially making a run? Are there any other double-seeded uh, teams you see potentially making a run this year? Definitely. I love Yale in that uh, 12-5 matchup uh, against Baylor. Baylor's not a great shooting team, uh, and Yale can take advantage of that potentially. They're playing, the game's being played in Providence, Rhode Island, which uh, is essentially a home game for Yale. And so that's an enormous advantage. And, uh, you know, Yale is a team where their two leaders, Makai Mason and uh, Justin Sears, both average over 15 points a game. Uh, and uh, like the tweeter said earlier, it's their best season since 1962, so there's certainly a lot of momentum coming out of the Ivy League. Mm-hmm. And not to mention, uh, well, Gonzaga is also a double-numbered seed, so uh, where do you see their road going in this tournament? If they get past Seton Hall, which I think they certainly can, uh, I, I see them probably you know, losing to Utah in the second round. Utah is a great team, and uh, in Denver, they'll be playing in front of a, a hefty uh, supporting cast. So you don't have them in the Final Four at all? I don't, not like last oh, year. Oh, man, that's, that's brutal. <laughs> that's that's tough. tough. Well, hey, well, hopefully you'll be wrong, but uh, you're still a good guy. I'd we'll like see you. to be wrong. Yeah, yeah, we all like to be wrong someday. Well, thank you very much for being here, Andy. Uh, now we're going to go over to Nick, where he's going to tell you more about some of the information of the game coming up tomorrow evening. Thank you for tuning in to the first episode of Bracketology. Remember, Gonzaga tips off tomorrow night against the sixth seeded Big East Tournament champions, Seton Hall Pirates, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Our next Bracketology will be on Monday, March 21st at 5 p.m., We'll recap the first weekend of the tournament and introduce a current GUCB senior and an alum that share a special bond. I'm Nick Blackburn. Have a good night and go Zags.